Hi everyone, this is an episode that was recorded almost a month ago, but I never got around to posting it, so here it is. It is connected to an article that I wrote about a month ago that's titled Healing with Heavenly Help, Transforming Your Attachment Style with Angels, where I explain the different attachment styles, I go over them, but I also talk about subconscious programming, how you can change your programming, and in this podcast, I will go deeper into the different attachment styles. Hi everyone, I'm Deborah, and welcome to The Alchemy of Love, Exploring Inner Healing for Healthy Relationships podcast. I'm an Akashic Records reader, angel communicator and channeler, intuitive artist and intuitive development coach. I am also passionate about trauma healing, and in this podcast I talk about energy healing in yourself in your relationships, attachment styles, codependency, cluster B personality disorders, toxic relationships, feminine energy, polarity, but also metaphysics, soul contracts, psychic energy, and more. And in this podcast, I am going to elaborate a little bit on an article that I sent out into the world a while ago. And the title of this article was Healing with Heavenly Help, Transforming Your Attachment Style with Angels. So you know that I love merging metaphysical stuff with psychology and especially everything that has to do with the subconscious mind and attachment styles. You can literally write a different program. So... Why do attachment styles matter? Why do I always talk about attachment styles? (laughs) Because it is really the foundation for how you interact with yourself, how you interact from this foundation of viewing yourself, interacting with yourself, how you then go and interact with everybody around you. And I would recommend for everybody to go do an attachment style test. Uh, I would just recommend for everybody to go do this and go to the website of the Personal Development School. Um, Go to that website. They have a great um, in-depth attachment style quiz that is pretty accurate. And the reason why you want to do this is because you can start healing a lot of stuff that you didn't even know you were projecting on other people. So I talk about this quite regularly. I talked about it a little bit in the previous podcast episode that I launched a while ago with my guest page, where we talked about narcissism, cluster B personality disorders. Um, And in this article, this Healing with Heavenly Help article, I talked about my old fearful avoidant attachment style that I developed. when I was younger and then I recognized what it was and I have been working on that very hard and I can now say that I am securely attached but you always have to be mindful of triggers and people that for instance are anxiously attached they will constantly seek validation people that have a fearful avoidant style They will either need the validation or they're going to push you away and going to (laughs) run, completely run away. Dismissive avoidance, they're just going to run. That's just their default. Like you say, anything you express, any uh, attachment or any affection, they're just going to run. You're you're not seeing them again. They will ghost you by. So the thing is, You can have this attachment style and be aware of it and work towards a secure attachment because you're going to feel better. You're also just going to feel better. The people around you are going to feel better and you can heal inner child stuff from a long time ago. And that's why in this article, I also said having an insecure attachment style is kind of like being a recovering alcoholic. You may be tempted to slip back into this anxious or avoidant 
style because this is an old program and you can easily go back into default mode if you are not aware of yourself, if you are not scanning yourself, if you are going outside of yourself. So this is an invitation constantly to be aware of what you are doing, um, of what you are surrounding yourself with, of the thoughts that you're having about yourself. And in a little bit, I'm going to give you some advice on the different attachment styles and how you can work towards developing a more secure attachment style. In my case, when I'm going through a lot of shifts, a lot of changes, I need something stable in my life. And because I have, um, well, not anymore, but I used to have this fearful avoidant attachment style. So I would either really cling on to another person but usually I would do the opposite because that would be too, um, I, I would not have control. <laughs> and the only way for me to have control would be to just really run the other direction and just completely ignore that they existed so that they could not hurt me, <laughs> which is very unstable. So you have to realize when you have that attachment style, you have to dare to be vulnerable you have to find healthy coping skills and you have to let people in and have secure um, hobbies, passions about yourself so that you feel secure on your own within yourself, in your life. And over the years, I have developed a lot of things that I am passionate about and what always works for me to immediately reset myself when I catch myself being not very secure. And we all have these days. There's not going to be a single person that's going to be like, oh, I am every day super secure within myself. Then we would have those couples, they're, they're never going to argue. These are people that have the perfect relationship. That is amazing. I would love to see that, but I don't think that exists. But... What helps for me is really having a meditation and prayer ritual every day. It may not be what helps for you. Maybe for you it's a daily walk. Maybe it's a bike ride. Maybe it's going on a walk with your dog. Stuff like that. And these are things that you can immediately do. You can immediately go and do those things when you feel that you are out of balance. So let's look at the four main attachment styles. There is the secure attachment style. There is the anxious preoccupied attachment style. There is the dismissive avoidant attachment style and fearful avoidant, also known as disorganized attachment style. So let's kind of look at all of these different attachment styles. If you are not aware of what your attachment style is, go take the test. Let me know in the comments what your results were and if you need advice on how to understand these attachment styles, go check out the other podcast episodes. Go check out my blog where I write about that stuff regularly and know that I do have coaching sessions right now at 50% off for new clients. But now let's look at the four attachment styles. The secure attachment style is people that really had a good childhood, consistent nurturing caregivers. They are comfortable with opening up to other people. They have a healthy, positive self-esteem. They don't distrust others by default, which is something that the other attachment styles, they're not gonna trust people. They have learned very early on, people cannot be trusted. But the securely attached person is naturally going to just trust people because that is what they have seen growing up. Now, then we have the anxious preoccupied attachment style. These people often had inconsistent caregivers when they were younger and they are constantly seeking closeness with those around them because they're always scared of being abandoned. They always need validation so they can get really clingy. What does this look like? This can look like the person that when you don't text them back right away, they, in their mind, they are going to the worst case scenario. 
their brain is already thinking that you hate them. <laughs> and, and yeah, and they will come up with these absurd scenarios. And in their mind, this is really going on. But the thing is, often none of that is going on. And the person on the other end of the phone is probably not even aware of the fact that there's a problem. And it's really, yeah, very stressful to have an anxious attachment style. And because they are trying to constantly fill up this, this gap of attention that they never received when they were growing up. Then there is the avoidant, and we have the dismissive avoidant and the fearful avoidant. The dismissive avoidant, they were around adults that they could not really rely on emotionally to be there for them. They did not have this emotional safety net. They kind of had to deal with everything on their own. So they be became hyper-independent because they could not get hurt if they didn't rely on other people. So they would just deal with everything themselves and they push everything down. Emotions, whatever. They are allergic to emotional intimacy and it is not really their fault. It's something, it's a coping skill that they developed in early childhood. And they're also not really gonna rely on others or open up because that was not something that they ever saw growing up. Then there's the fearful avoidant. This is also called a disorganized attachment style because they grew up with adults that were more like unpredictable. One time they could be very nice, the other time they could be unavailable or angry or whatever. So they had to always walk on eggshells and they have both a fear of intimacy and a fear of rejection. So they want to develop close relationships with others, but when they get too close, then they will back up and they will run. <laughs> and it's kind of this push and pull thing. They chase and then they panic when the other person comes too close because, oh no, what if you hurt me? I will sabotage this real quick and, and run first. So that is the fearful avoidant attachment style. And it's all about how do you see yourself? Even if you don't take an attachment style test, look at how you see yourself. Don't overthink it just right away. Answer out loud or in your head, how do you see yourself? How have you been programmed to see yourself? Do you think you're not worth much? Do you think you are very valuable? Do you think that people like you? Do you think that everybody else is always better than you? Are you putting people on a pedestal? And just from the first reaction that you have right now upon hearing this question, you can already look at what your attachment style may be. So let's look at what this inner dialogue looks like for each attachment style. The securely attached person has a balanced inner dialogue. They value themselves and they value the relationships around them and they find joy in really expressing themselves, exploring what they like, who they are as a foundation for everything else, for all the other relationships around them. The anxious, preoccupied people, they will be really hard on themselves. They're going to be very self-critical. They're going to be questioning their worthiness. They're going to always feel like their value depends on the opinions of the people around them. The dismissive avoidant is going to have a very independent, self-reliant inner dialogue. They are going to dismiss um, other people like, oh, relationships, mm, no, that's not important. I don't need it in my life because they're, that's a coping skill to not get hurt. They're doing the opposite of the anxious person and they will do whatever they can to not let people get too close. The fearful avoidant is going to have an inner dialogue that is very disorganized. They're going to be going back and forth. <laughs> They, it's going to depend on the people that they are around. If somebody is very clingy, they will pull back and they will run and they are going to be shutting that other person down because this other person apparently places a lot of value on them and they're going to be pressured like, oh my God, can I live up to what you 
see me as like this person that you think I am. Can I even live up to that? I'm just going to push you away. And if this other person is not really giving them the feedback, then they're going to lean in. So all of these attachment styles, the anxious, preoccupied, the dismissive avoidant, fearful avoidant, they're either pulling back way too much or leaning in way too much. And this is because they're not balanced within themselves. So to become secure, it all starts within. It all starts with self-development. And it's about understanding yourself, your reactions. And what, what I said in this article is also, it's not about shaming anyone. It's not about being better or worse. It's about understanding yourself and learning how to become the observer of your reactions instead of identifying with the reactions. And that is healing. That is healing of your attachment style. So when you notice that you are an avoidant or anxious, just observe what's going on and say, this is interesting. I am observing these emotions. And then you can have a conversation with yourself without having to identify with what's happening. And you can then overwrite the old programming because that's all that it is an attachment style is a programming it's a program that is running and you can deprogram it and install a new program and that is why I love working with affirmations but I love working with clearing statements even more in hypnosis in a state of hypnosis because you are using all of the good stuff together this is basically what you're doing. You are, I call them affirmations on steroids. When you call in angelic assistance, we're not doing this on our own. And that is why I love merging spirituality with psychology, subconscious mind. We can prove this. Science can prove how this works. The brain, we can scan the brain. We can see the effects of these things on the brain. And then... I know for myself that angelic assistance is real, that it works, that we just have to ask. We have to ask for the guidance. We have to ask for the help. And I've seen in my own life how it has transformed my entire life. So in my healing sessions, I do this with people. We overwrite old programming and we work around attachment styles. We work around inner child stuff. We work around trauma, healing, all kinds of stuff. And it is just something that I wish more people knew about. And I feel in the future, people will know more about holistic, energetic ways of healing trauma. So what does healing look like more specifically for each insecure attachment style? For the anxious, preoccupied person... This looks like developing self-soothing techniques, establishing clear communication, setting boundaries to ease anxiety and encouraging independence in relationships. Now, some examples, self-soothing techniques. I have a friend who is an anxious, preoccupied um, person, and they will get very anxious when their partner isn't responding right away and they start making up all these stories, these hypothetical stories that are not even going on. They're not going on. And the thing is, it's not her fault. It is how it's the programming. It's the programming. But then you are going to direct all of your attention to this program that is running, that is creating the stories. Oh, my God, they haven't texted me in two hours. They're cheating on me. They're, they're hating me. They're already packing up, packing up their stuff and moving out. I don't know. <laughs> but what you do, you have to have something in place, a hack in place. And it can be as ridiculous as having an app on your phone, something to distract you. Like, what do you love? Do you love cooking? Maybe you love cooking. What is it that you can do from within you? So you have a cooking app with recipes every time that you open up this text message thing and you try to message them or you you're looking like oh no they haven't messaged me back oh no um they're they're dumping me 
like you start thinking this crazy stuff. Immediately, instead of going into the texting app, you go into your cooking app and you just start browsing recipes. You distract yourself with something that fills you up. So you're not just giving and giving into this program, pouring into this program that you, that isn't serving you. So you go and do something like that. Or maybe you like to craft. I don't know. Go and find ideas of things that you can make. Maybe you like um, shopping. <laughs> I don't know. You just go and look uh, at some clothes online or something. Maybe you like a specific kind of music. Go on Spotify or on YouTube and start listening to music. And if you do this every time, you're going to overwrite the program. If that is just automatically something that you do each time that you feel the anxiety coming up, you have this, scope, this coping skill, this self-soothing technique in place, immediately you will overwrite the program and the anxious attachment style. You're going to do this for a while, okay? You're going to do this for a couple of months in the beginning. It's going to feel very forced. You're going to still feel anxious. After a while, it's going to get easier. And before you know it, you're going to have a secure attachment style. Because in the beginning, this may sound weird, you have to fake it. You have to fake it. You have to believe that you are securely attached until there's going to be a point where all of a sudden you realize, I don't, I don't get anxiety anymore. Oh, they haven't texted me in a couple hours. They're just doing something. I'll hear from them when I hear from them. And you're not automatically thinking that they're dumping you, that they hate you or whatever. So that is how you can get over this anxious, preoccupied, attachment style. The dismissive avoidant who... Um, so if you are a dismissive avoidant and you're somebody that really would like connection with other people, but when somebody gets too close, you immediately push them away, you isolate. You have to gradually open up emotionally, acknowledge emotions without judgment. So when you acknowledge, oh, I feel a connection and you don't push it away or you don't go like, oh, that's not important. Just acknowledge it within yourself and realize that you have to work on being vulnerable, becoming uh, available, emotionally open and available. And that's going to be scary, but it's something that you're going to have to try to do. And if it's too difficult to do this with somebody that is very close to you, like somebody that you are developing a relationship with, seek out a third party, a neutral person, a therapist, I don't know, a coach that's going to help you get over this, somebody that you have no that, that you're not emotionally invested in. So if you feel like you need some help with this, find somebody like me, find somebody online, a different person. It doesn't have to be me, it can be anybody that has knowledge on attachment styles that can help you become more securely attached. The fearful avoidant, they have to really learn how to trust gradually and build trust with a person, having open communication so that they can actually say, hey, I feel myself retreating in fearful avoidant. I feel I am going to pull back. Saying that is already the first step. It's open communication. You're talking about your fears instead of bottling it up and pulling away. Also not judging yourself and realizing that you are going to be going back and forth between this anxious and avoidant attachment style and immediately again finding ways to do something healthy for yourself. In my case, that is, I'm going to go and read. I have a ton of interesting books. I love reading about history. I love reading about spirituality and I'm going to go and pray and meditate and work with my spirit team, for instance. I have a ton of other creative things that I can do to keep myself occupied. And what's really important, I think, for all attachment styles is communication, open communication. And I cannot emphasize enough 
calling upon your spirit team, calling upon your guidance higher self and outsource some of this stuff. You don't have to do this alone. We were never meant to live this earth life all alone without any backup. We have the celestial backup. We just have to realize that we have this entire spirit entourage. So I do have spots open for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Um, if you feel like you need extra help with this, also go find my article on my Substack page. It is um, on my website. You can find it there in the blog section. You can go to my Substack. It's called Healing with Heavenly Help. And let me know what your attachment style is, because I'm really curious. I'm always very curious to see what other attachment styles people have. And we can have a conversation about it. So if you would like to find out more information, um, go check out the description where you can find all the links. If you have any questions about any topics that I talk about uh, on any of these podcast episodes, reach out because I love answering your questions in my podcast episodes. And remember, you get 50% off on your first session with me. And stay tuned for more episodes coming up soon. Bye-bye.